Now let's finish finding uh, solving part A. So we said that F2 is not conservative, but F1 is conservative. So we have to find the potential corresponding of any uh, uh, a potential of any conservative force. So F1 is conservative, so we'll find it. So let me copy, copy F1. So we get this. Now, we know that F is going to be equal to negative the derivative of our potential. So in our case, we can find that F is equal to the derivative of our potential in terms of x, or of course the negative in front, the high f direction, plus the derivative of our function potential in the y direction, in terms of uh, in the j the hat direction, plus the derivative of our function in terms of z in the k hat direction. Uh, so now let's find it, negative in front, like said before. We know that this part here is going to be equal to 2x I had with the four and then uh, uh, it's going to be negative sort of this plus two y z and then a g hat in front plus y squared k hat. Now this makes sense because we took the negative in front out. But if we want to find the uh, our function, we're going to have to find the integral of these parts here. So integral, for example, of 2x, sorry, negative, uh, negative again, of uh, 2x in the dx. So we're going to have a x squared, actually, sorry, here's going to be only one negative. So x squared, and that is the first part for the x, and then the integral of negative in front of, as like I said, negative. 2yz the dy because that's what we derived for dy. And so we're gonna get a 2 sorry a y squared z. And for the last one instead we have the integral of uh, y squared in terms of z because we said in terms of z. So we're gonna get y squared z. Now as you can see we have two things that are the same. Now if we have to accept two things that are the exact same then we do not add it together because if we were to add it together then we will get uh, a 2y squared z and when we derive this for example in terms of y we're going to do it in terms of uh, z as well we're going to get a 4 y z which we do not have and for example when we do it in terms of z we get a 2y squared which we do not have as you can see the 2 in front that is not actually wrong we have to get a y squared z and if we derive y squared z you will see that we get exactly what we have so we get 2y z which we do have so this one was wrong but this one is correct and then the same in, the, in terms of z is going to be equals to y sorry, y squared, which we do have. So that is correct again. Um, now the, our function then will be equals to what x squared plus uh, y squared z. But one thing you have to take in consideration is a constant that can be after. For example. If we had at the beginning something like a number after, for example, a seven, then any negative derivation, whether it's in terms of x, whether it's in terms of y, or in terms of z, we're always going to get the same answer, which is zero. Indeed, in every integral we do, we always have to add c, which is our constant, I'm sorry, this will be the constant of integration. Because our integration never gives us constant if we don't have boundaries. So that means that we have to add a C to say that we have you know, a constant. And that is our finished part A of our solution, part A of our problem. For part B instead, we're going to have something 
similar. So now here we have a picture of what we are gonna have to find, and we are told that we need to find our uh, the work done by a force that is non-conservative. So in this case, force two. So let's go ahead and take force two, copy and paste. Put it over here. And that's that's good. Okay. So now, first of all, the work is going to be equals to negative of the integral of a force along a uh, displacement force vector, of course. <coughs> that can be broken into three pieces if we have a work along the x direction, a work along the y direction, and a work along the z direction. I'm going to have negative f of x dx, negative f of y dy, and negative f of z dz. So let's break into these pieces. Uh, let me draw the picture that we have on the book here, so it's easy for you to see. We have actually three different displacements. But we start from a point, we go towards the same another point. And here we have the point one, one, and on this side we have the point negative one, negative one, and first displacement this person that I'm gonna follow in blue is gonna be equal to this directly. The second displacement will be a two parts displacement. So first of all along the x-axis and then along the y-axis like this and like this and then a third one which is the last one then there's going to be something like this a curve now maybe a perfect circle can draw a perfect circle but you know what so for the first one it's this one second one it's this one and third and last it's going to be this one for the first one how the first one the first one then goes along the equation y equals to x. So dy is equals to dx. And let's say that we start at point x equals to negative 1, we go all the way to the point x equals to 1. Oops. So this means that our work along the x-axis Actually, I'll, yeah, I'll work along the axis with negative the force along the x of the, the displacement on the x as well. So we start from negative 1 to 1, and we get, uh, <coughs> and we do get uh, f of x, f and the component x, which is this part over here, which will be y, and we know that y, let me actually write it the way it's easier for me. So now we know that y is equals to x, so instead of writing y, we can write x, because that's the same thing, x dx. We integrate this, and we get negative 1 half x squared, so negative 1 to 1. So we get negative 1 half plus 1 half, uh, sorry, yes, negative 1 half plus 1 half, so they cancel each other, and we get a 0. Instead for the y, f of y dy, because we only have two dimensions, we go from negative 1 to 1, f of y is going to be equal to negative x. So if we have negative x, means that we're going to have to put it in uh, f of y, so negative, integral of negative x dy, negative 1 to 1. Uh, this is where things get a little trickier. Uh, as you can see, our x is equal to the y, and dx is equal to dy, so we can rewrite everything the way we want it to be, because it doesn't matter if we write something uh, differently as we have the same, sorry, we have the same thing right over here for our problem. Good. Uh, okay, so let's uh, start it. We're going to have... 
Mm-hmm. A equals to negative one. One. Oh, uh, can say again. Uh, since we, since x equals to y, we can write y dy. So we get uh, one half minus one half. Um, so I made the minus two. Give me one second. No, no, it's correct. Sorry. Okay. So one half y squared from negative one to one, which is gonna be equal to one half minus one half, which is equal to zero. So the work I want to call work one, as long as the path one is going to be equal to zero. Now the work two instead, so therefore along path two, let's go back and look at it, is broken into two different pieces that this is going on. We go from negative one, one, from negative one, negative one, two, uh, to one, negative one. So first of all, we go along the x-axis. So our, look right here, our x goes from negative one to x equals to one, and our y is always equals to uh, negative one. So dy is equals to zero, because when we write the y, we get zero. So we can think put everything in terms of x for now, f of x dx uh, from negative one to one. Now f of x, like we said before, is gonna be equals to, let's look at that there, be equals to y, so y, start writing y, we know that y is equals to negative one. So we're gonna get negative one, taking the go from negative one to one in terms of dx. So we're gonna get negative x from negative one to one. So we get a negative one plus, sorry, minus one. So we get negative two. Uh, and that is our uh, work on our case. Uh, um, okay. Uh, oh, I I wrote the negative in front before that we didn't need actually because work is positive with the force. So this work is right here. Work is this formula right here. So not a negative in front. Okay. It doesn't change anything in our calculation so far, but it will change uh, in our calculations later. So we have a negative one and we get a negative two. And then we have the second movement that goes from y is equal to negative one, as you can see here, from this point down here, to our point down here. So x remains the same, but x, y changes. So y goes from negative one to y equals to one. And x is always gonna be equals to one. So the derivative of x is going to equal to zero, the derivative of uh, one is zero. So in our case, the only thing that matters is the f of y, dy, from negative one to one. So in this case, we get um, the integral from negative one to one of what is our uh, value of, or of the thing for y. We have negative x. So negative x, so negative x is negative one, x is equal to negative one, x is equal to one, so negative one dy. So we get a negative, uh, yeah, a negative y, it goes from one to negative one. Uh, so again, we get a negative one minus one, so we get a negative two again. And then we sum the two works together so work on the x-axis plus the work on the y-axis. Go to this one here. Go to y and work on the x, which is equals to negative two plus negative two is equal to negative four, and that is our work for our second thing. Now, as you can see, our second one though is going to be uh, different than the first one because of our force is not serious, so it's path dependent. 